Hey, if you clicked on this video because you want to know how to cure misophonia, or maybe you've been told that there is no cure for misophonia, there's nothing you can do, all you have, or all you can do is use coping mechanisms to live with it. If you've heard, you'll be stuck with it for the rest of your life. I heard and believed all of this too. I am a misophonia rewiring coach and I suffered from misophonia for more than 20 years before finally eliminating it through unconscious reprogramming. And let me first say, as a coach, I don't believe that you need a cure for misophonia because I know that there's nothing wrong with you. If you are watching this video, then you are capable of accessing the internet, searching how to cure misophonia, how to treat misophonia, whatever it is, clicking on the video, you're hearing my voice, maybe you're seeing me on your screen, your mind is operating just fine. And what's happening is there's just this glitch that's causing you discomfort. So just like operating a computer, right? If you have too many apps up or too many tabs at one time, things might start to get bogged down and run a bit, a, a bit more slowly. Or maybe you have malware that's been installed in your computer. So what do you do? You don't just throw up the computer and get a new one because there's nothing wrong with the computer. There's just too many tabs open or there's just this virus that's infiltrated the system. So what we can do is we can refresh the computer. We can uninstall something, right? Uninstall that glitch and install something that's going to be more useful for you moving forward. And that is why I believe that unconscious reprogramming is the key to living a normal life misophonia free. Misophonia is simply a pattern that's operating in your unconscious mind. For whatever reason, your mind has decided that these noises that trigger you are quite literally equal to a predator chasing after you in the wild. And so when you hear a trigger noise, whatever it might be, your mind sends signals like danger, 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 and it creates a, an emotion within you to get you to act and get away from this threat. So for example, if you hear a trigger noise, you might start to feel really angry and your mind knows that that anger is gonna motivate you to leave the room, ask the person to stop, mimic the sound, put in earplugs. It knows it's gonna motivate you to either get away from or eliminate what it perceives as a threat. And that's what the glitch is. We consciously know that these noises that are causing us pain, we know that it's irrational to be bothered by them. We know that they're not physically chasing after us with a knife trying to kill us. And yet this conscious understanding doesn't change how we experience and react to these noises. And that's because this pattern of misophonia isn't operating at the conscious level. It's rooted in and operating outside of conscious awareness in your unconscious mind, and then we're experiencing it consciously. And our minds create and run patterns all the time to make life easier. Imagine if you had to think about every little thing that you did every second of every day. Imagine if you had to remind yourself to breathe or to digest food. Imagine if you had to think about, okay, oh, sorry, my cat is grooming himself in the background. Imagine if you had to think about walking and you're like, okay, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. These things happen automatically and that's because your mind is taking care of this for you to make your life easier, right? And that's what's happening with the pattern of misophonia. And so we can clear up that glitch. We can show mind that these noises aren't actually a threat. And when we get that message to the unconscious mind, when we communicate in a way that makes sense to your unconscious mind, then we can interrupt, uninstall that pattern and install something that's gonna be more useful for you. And it all starts with speaking the language of the unconscious mind. Your unconscious mind isn't communicating with logic. It's not thinking rationally. Its prime directive is keeping you alive. And this part of our mind developed before everything we're experiencing today. So think about rabbits, for example. You don't see a colony of rabbits building societies and cultures and language. They're very much living in the something is about to happen, it's happening, or it just happened. They're living in the now, and they're just doing what they need to in order to survive. As human beings, we operate from this place as well, 
and we have this more developed conscious mind that allows us to imagine the future, to think about the past. It allows us to brainstorm and create and design, and it's why we experience so many amazing things as human beings. And also, because these parts of the mind operate so differently, from time to time, there can be misunderstandings, there can be glitches. And so what we can do is communicate in a way that the unconscious mind understands through stories, metaphors, colors, symbols, so that what we know consciously, these sounds aren't actually a threat, unconscious mind actually gets, receives, and understands that message. And then it clears up the pattern of misophonia. So if you're searching how to treat misophonia, how to cure misophonia, I'm telling you, you don't need a cure because again, there's nothing wrong with you. Your mind is operating just fine. There's just a glitch that feels like this big, horrible thing because of how you've been experiencing it. But if you think of the grand scheme of things, it's this small glitch that we can correct so that then you can live more freely, more smoothly, and everything seems to be operating at perfection. That is what we can do through unconscious reprogramming, using multi-level communication, and that is what I support my clients in doing. That's what I did for myself after 20 years of suffering. So if you're like, okay, Brooklyn, this sounds amazing, but how the heck do I get started? What I do with my clients first is we, we work on shifting their perspective around misophonia. So if you've decided, okay, I want to get rid of this thing, and at the same time, you've also decided that you're stuck and there's nothing that you can do, then you're right. That's the self-fulfilling prophecy. If you've decided that there's nothing you can do, then it doesn't matter how hard you try to heal, you aren't going to get results. And also, if misophonia is so heavily tied to your identity, if misophonia is who you are, then it's less likely that your unconscious mind is going to be really jazzed about getting rid of a part of yourself. Your unconscious mind wants to keep you alive. It's focused on survival. It doesn't want to eliminate a part of who you are, even if it's a part that's been causing you pain, because that part of you is familiar and familiarity feels safe. Think about people who know that they're in a toxic relationship and yet it's difficult to leave. Even though they're experiencing friction in that relationship, it also is very familiar and it may even provide some kind of safety to them. Maybe it's financial safety or housing, whatever it might be, it seems like there's a battle between conscious and unconscious and it's simply just because your unconscious mind is doing what it thinks is best to keep you alive. And also, sometimes the unconscious mind can get it wrong or make a mistake or experience a glitch. So that is why the first thing that I recommend if you're like, okay, how the hell do I get rid of my misophonia? How do I, if you're someone who's like, how do I cure this or how do I treat this? Again, I don't believe that you need a treatment or a cure, but if, if, that, if those words resonate for you, how do you get started? It's shifting your perspective. It's first tapping into this belief that change is possible. And I know it is because I've experienced it myself and my clients are experiencing it right now, those who are working with me. And you have done this too. Maybe not necessarily with the pattern of misophonia, but you've definitely altered other patterns in your life. So think about maybe there's a food or a drink that as a kid you really didn't like, and now as an adult you enjoy it or you don't mind it. Or vice versa, maybe there was something you loved and now you can't stand it. Or think about a past partner. You used to really, really like this person and now you can look back and you might think, how the hell did I ever date that person? That is a pattern that you've interrupted and you've installed a new understanding. Or if you are driving to work, you likely take the same route every single day. If you're walking, biking, driving, whatever. And one day you're getting to work and there's construction. What do you do? You likely don't just say, oh, well, there's construction. Guess I have to turn around and not go to work today. You don't just plow through the construction. You find an alternate route. That is a pattern that's been operating day after day. You take the same route to work. You likely get to work and you, you forget the drive there because it's just automatic. And yet if something happens, if we get new information, aka construction, 
we can then interrupt that pattern, reroute, and take a new way to work. So we uninstall and reinstall different patterns, different habits all the time. And if you can do that, you can do the same thing with misophonia. So it starts with shifting your perspective. Also, observing your language can be so helpful. Is the language that you're using in reference to misophonia, is it helpful, harmful, or neutral? So if you're saying over and over again, I'm stuck with this for the rest of my life. I have misophonia. I'm a misophone. This is just who I am. I can't help it. That language is keeping you stuck in the pattern, in the suffering spiral. So if you can shift just an easy, easy shift from I have misophonia to this is something I'm experiencing, that wedge between identity and experience, it seems so small but it starts to loosen the grip that misophonia has on your identity and it's going to make it easier for you to actually create relief. And as you begin to step into this first phase of healing, shifting your perspective, once you have successfully tapped into this belief that change is possible, then you can start doing the rewiring work. You can start rewiring the pattern to something that's gonna be more useful for you. And if you're looking for support with this, number one, I have a video. It'll pop up somewhere here. It's about the three keys to misophonia relief. Go watch that. Two, subscribe to my channel because we have so many amazing, helpful videos coming out. And three, check the description in this video and get on my email list. Once a quarter, I launch my signature program, Rewire Misophonia at the Source. This is the program that is going to walk you through my entire roadmap to relief. This is the program where my clients are experiencing amazing results. One of my clients reported an 80% improvement rate in their experience with misophonia. Imagine what an 80% improvement for you, how would that feel? What would that look like? Who could you now spend time with? What else could you do? How could you show up and, and focus at work? These are the results that I want for you. And that's what I create inside that program. And I do also offer limited one-on-one -on -one coaching spots as well. And you'll know about when those spots are available if you sign up for the email list. So make sure you do that. Subscribe to these videos and I will see you in the next video on the Let's Ditch Misophonia YouTube channel.